Hi, I'm Chris Rycroft and welcome to Harvard Applied Math 205, a graduate course in scientific computing and numerical methods. In this video, we're going to complete our survey of optimization methods by briefly looking at PDE constrained optimization. Here, we want to optimize certain aspects of a PDE solution and we're going to look at some of the specific numerical issues and methods that we can use for problems of this type. We're now going to focus on the original unconstrained optimization form that we introduced at the start, where we want to minimize G of P for P and Rn. And optimization methods usually need some derivative information, such as using finite differences to approximate the gradient of G at P. But using finite differences can be expensive, especially if we have many parameters. So suppose that we approximate dG by dPi at P, then we could use a first order finite difference scheme and use g of p plus hei minus g of p divided by h where here h is a small step size and ei is a unit vector in the pi direction. So we would need n plus 1 total evaluations of g in order to approximate the full gradient of g at p. And when we looked at the Himmelblau example, we saw that supplying the gradient of g would cut down on the total number of function evaluations that were required. And for the Himmelblau function, those extra calls due to finite differences weren't a big deal since each evaluation is very cheap. But in PDE constrained optimization, each evaluation of g of p would require a full PDE solve. Hence, for PDE constrained optimization with many parameters, it's important to be able to compute the gradient more efficiently. And there are two main approaches, the direct method and the adjoint method. And the direct method is simpler, but the adjoint method is much more efficient if we have many parameters. As an example, Let's consider the ODE boundary value problem on the interval from A to B. And the equation that we're going to look at is minus U double prime of X and parameters P plus R of X and parameters P times U of X and parameters P is equal to F of X using Dirichlet boundary conditions that U of A is equal to U of B is equal to zero. And we'll refer to this as the primal equation. And here P is an n-dimensional parameter vector and r is some arbitrary function of x and the parameters. So we'll define an output functional based on integral little g of u is equal to the integral from a to b of sigma of x u of x dx and here sigma is some arbitrary function. And then we'll define our original g of p as little g of u of p. So we can observe that dg by dpi is equal to the integral from a to b of sigma of x du by dpi dx. And therefore, if we can compute du by dpi for i equal 1 to n, then we can obtain the gradient. So assuming sufficient smoothness, we can differentiate our original ODE boundary value problem with respect to pi to obtain the equation minus du double prime by dpi plus r times du by dpi is equal to minus dr by dpi times u. And this will be true for i equal 1 to n. Once we compute each du by dpi, then we can evaluate the gradient of g by performing a sequence of n integrals. And this gives us the direct method. On the surface, this might not seem like much of an improvement over the finite difference approach, since we still need to solve n separate ODE boundary value problems. However, in practice, this can result in substantial computational savings. And if we look at the equation that we're solving, the only thing that changes is the right-hand side. And therefore, we can get substantial vectorization savings. We could LU factorize our system matrix once, and then for each component, 
we can perform backward and forward substitutions that are cheap to do. Another advantage of the direct method is that because we're no longer using final differences, we no longer have to make a choice of size h of step to use in our final difference formula. And therefore, we no longer have discretization errors associated with h. If n is large, then a more efficient approach is to use the adjoint method. And to employ this method, we introduce the adjoint equation for a function z of x and parameters p. And to begin with, this equation will appear as though it comes from thin air. However, we'll see why it's important in a moment. So we have that minus z double prime plus r times z is equal to sigma, and we have zero Dirichlet boundary conditions that z of a is equal to z of b is equal to zero. So now let's revisit our expression for dg by dpi. And we know that this is equal to the integral from a to b of sigma times du by dpi dx. And we can now use our adjoint equation to substitute for sigma. So we have the integral from a to b of minus c double prime plus r times z times du by dpi dx. And we can now use integration by parts to shift the two derivatives on z double prime across to du by dpi. And if we do this, then we end up with the integral from a to b of z times minus du double prime by dpi plus r times du by dpi times dx. And in the integration by parts, we don't get any boundary terms since they all vanish due to our zero Dirichlet boundary conditions. So we see that for this specific form of a joint equation, something interesting happens. And the bracketed term now is the left-hand side of our equation for the derivative of the primal problem with respect to pi. So if we recall this equation, then we can see that we can now substitute into our integral expression and that will leave us with dg by dpi is equal to minus the integral from a to b of dr by dpi times z times u times dx. And this now results in a dramatic simplification. To find our gradient of g, all we need to do is solve our two differential equations for our primal and adjoint problems. And then each component of the gradient can be found using a single integration. So in this problem, we introduce the adjoint equation from thin air. But now we see how it's used, we could actually take a different problem and follow these steps in reverse to derive the appropriate adjoint equation. And for more complicated PDEs, this formulation might become more complicated, but in general, the same principles will apply.